Hey everyone, welcome to the first lesson of the new year. Happy 2021. Okay, so pause and try the do now. So this is another SAT question. At a lunch stand, each hamburger has 50 more calories than the fries. If two hamburgers and three orders of fries have a total of 1,700 calories, how many calories does a hamburger have? So now you could totally do guess and check if you want. Um, it's, it's up to you. I did this using a system of equations, but if you want to sit there and try guess and check, go for it. I mean, it's, it, you know, um, although this one, how many, this is going to be a grid in. There's no multiple choice for this problem. So here's how I did it. Each hamburger. So H has, has is the, uh, you know, a form of is so equals 50 more calories than the fries two hamburgers and three fries equal 1700. So this is a system where I'm going to do a substitution. I'm going to replace H with 50 plus F. So two instead of H, right? So I'm rewriting that bottom one, but instead of H, we're going to put 50 plus F. And then it's just a regular linear equation, distribute. 100 plus 2F plus 5F equals 1,700. I'm going to subtract the 100 on both sides and combine. So 7F equals 1,600. You know what I did? I made a mistake. I added those in my head. This was a 3. And so now it's a 5. Divide by five. So the fries is three, five, two, zero, 320. So that the hamburgers are 50 plus 320. So that's 370. How many calories does a hamburger have? So 370, and that's what you'd grid in. Okay, so remember this is vertex form and there's a minus here. So we always change the sign of the inside, the outside stays the same. So if I have y equals two times x plus four squared minus 11, change the sign of the inside, negative four, the outside stays the same. Because remember what you're doing is you're really making what will make that inside equal to zero. If I plug in negative four, this whole thing is zero and I'm left with negative 11. All right, so. What is the, we always start with our vertex. So the vertex, change the sign of the inside. Outside stays the same. Now, think back. Do you remember the shifting rule? Our shifting rule is over, up. Remember, this whole thing is based on x squared, the parent function. So 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. If you can fit it, you can do 4 16. So I'm going to start with my vertex, negative 6, negative 4, plot that point, and then from that, I'm going to go over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1 in both directions. And then go back to your vertex, over 2, up 4, over 2, up 4. So remember, we're always counting, where is that? We're always counting from this vertex right here. So 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now I'm going to do 3, 9. Back to my start at my vertex, one, two, three, and then up nine. So it's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and nine. Sixteen doesn't quite fit. Sorry, this is really ugly, but that's okay. Okay, so what are my roots? Roots are where this thing crosses the x-axis. This crosses the x-axis at negative 4 and negative 8. So negative 4, 0. Negative 8, 0. The y-intercept, remember, is where x is 0. So when x is 0, what's the y? If I plug in here, 0 plus 6 squared minus 4. That's 36 minus 4, which is 32. And then symmetric point, we double the vertex. So instead of negative 6, negative 12, 32. 
That's it. All right, pause and do this one on your own. All right, so my vertex changed the sign of the inside. Outside stays the same. That negative in front does not affect the vertex. But what does it do? That changes our up to down. So we're still, so instead of going over and up, one, one, two, four, three, nine. I can, I'm going to do 416 for this one. We change it to down. So over one, down one, over two, down four, over three, down nine, over four, down 16. That's nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Now you should notice something interesting. What are my roots? Zero, zero, right, right there, and six, zero. And those are exact. So now also my y-intercept is the is a root, zero, zero. And my symmetric point is six, zero. So it's a lot of repetition. I usually don't worry about these when that happens. Um, but it doesn't really matter if you put it or not. Okay, now we're going to get into the harder ones. So, what is your vertex? Change the sign of the inside, outside stays the same. Now, with this one, we have that two in front. While it doesn't change the vertex, it does have an effect on the graph. What happens when there's a number in front of the x squared? It makes the graph go up faster. So, one, one, two, four, three, nine. So, instead of going up by one, What's actually we're going to have to do is multiply everything by 2. Because of that 2 in front, we're going up by 2, we're going up by 8, and then 18. So I'm going to plot my negative 5, negative 8, and then I'm going to go over 1, up 2, over 1, up 2, over 2, up 8, over 2, up 8, over 3 of 18. With these, a lot of times you can't put as many. This one, it does fit. But it's really common to have less than um, our 7 points. So this one has nice roots. Negative 3, 0. Negative 7, 0. Uh, Y-intercept, again, we have to plug in. Now this one's a little trickier. When I plug in my 0, 2 times 0 plus 5 squared minus 8. Remember order of operations, we do our square first. So that's 2 times 25 minus 8. 50 minus 8 is 42. So it's 0, 42 and negative 10, 42. Remember we double the x of the vertex. And that's it. All right, pause and try this one on your own. So again, that negative three out front does not affect the vertex. It will affect the up and down and the y values. Sorry, I'm a little uncomfortable. I was sitting on the floor. Okay, so my vertex is one, three, change the sign of the inside, outside stays the same. So we got one, three, so we've got our over and our up. One, one, two, four, three, nine. Now, what are we multiplying by this time? This time, we're multiplying by negative three. So times negative three, negative three, negative three. So I get, ugh, I'm running out of space. Negative three, negative 12, can you even see that? I'm going to write it over here. Negative 3, negative 12, negative 27. So, we can't do the 27, right? That's way too big. So, I'll just fit what I can. So, over 1, down 3. Over 2, down 12. So, then that's here and here. It's pretty skinny. 
So it's pretty common to have these like awkward graphs. So my roots here are zero, zero and two, zero. Y intercept. Well, we can just see that on the graph, it's zero, zero. And then because of that, my symmetric point is two, zero. All right, so now we're gonna get into the more difficult ones, right? So these are a little harder, but I have confidence in us. All right, so I want you to pause and graph it. You're gonna have some issue with the roots, but that's okay, we can do it. <clears throat> so my vertex is negative four, negative one. Negative four, negative one. We are going over and up. One, one, two, four. Now we're multiplying by five. So this is five and 20. So we're really only gonna have three points here. I'm gonna go over one, up five. And I really, I can't fit anything else on this graph because it's so skinny. That's it. Okay, so um, skip the roots for now. What is the y-intercept gonna be? So that's five times four squared minus one, order of operations, exponents first. So that's 80 minus one, so 79. So zero, 79, symmetric point negative eight, 79. I don't know why I have axis symmetry. It's just that. Okay, now the roots. How could we figure out what these are? Well, remember the roots are where this thing equals zero. So five x plus four squared minus one equals zero. How do you solve that? We spent some time earlier this year solving that. Well, we can add one to both sides. Divide by five, so we just isolated the parentheses. Then how do you get rid of that square? We take the square root of both sides. X plus four equals plus or minus the, squ the square root of one fifth, and then subtract four. So we get X equals negative four plus or minus the square root of one over five. All right, so now we're, I want you to get into trying that. I know it's hard, but we can do it. All right, last one for today. Try it on your own and go through and try to solve to find the actual roots. All right, so my vertex, change the sign of the inside. Outside stays the same. So we're going over, up. One, one, two, four, three, nine. Now we're multiplying by negative two. So we get negative two, negative eight, negative 18. All right, so one negative two and two negative eight, and that's all we're gonna be able to fit. So we're here and here. All right, y-intercept, plug in our zero again. So negative two, zero minus eight squared plus four. Eight squared is 64. Negative 128 plus four is negative 124. So zero, negative 124, double that eight, we get 16, negative 124. All right, so that was the easy part. Now we're gonna go through and we're gonna solve the equation. So I have zero equals negative two x minus eight squared plus four. What do I do first? I'm gonna subtract that four. Divide by the negative two. This one actually comes out a little nicer than the last one. Two equals x minus eight quantity squared. 
Now that the square, the parentheses squared is by itself, we take the square root of both sides. X minus 8 equals plus or minus root 2. And then last we add 8. So we get 8 plus or minus root 2. Now if you plug that in the calculator, 8 plus root 2, you'll get, prob you'll get around 9 and change. 8 minus root 2, you'll get 6 and change. All right, practice. So while the graphing is really easy, it is more difficult to find these zeros. And that's, that's the hard part about graphing quadratics. It's finding those roots. Um, so we really need to use that idea of factoring and quadratic formula and solving square roots to figure that out. Have a fabulous day.